welcome back to the second section in our series through Acts 20, looking at these gospel essentials. Last time we saw how we are to testify to the truth. And in this section, we hear Paul saying to these Ephesian elders that they must protect the truth. You can just take some time to read through this section and familiarize yourself with it. And look out for some key repetition that you might notice or note down questions that you may have rising out of the text and spend some time praying that God would open your eyes to understand his word better, that you would have a firmer grasp of his truth. And for those who are teaching this to others, I pray that this may be helpful to you just to see some of the, the key things that are coming out of this text. There's one tool that helps to see uh, the structure of a narrative like this is looking out for what we call imperatives. There are three imperatives uh, in this text. Uh, sadly, the NIV translation uh, loses one. There should be a word in here, behold, which you'll see in the, the ESV. So that is uh, a noun, that is a command, so we call that an imperative. So we've got this imperative, behold, and we've got another imperative in verse 28, and then in verse 31, be on your guard. So those three imperatives, they're verbs that are commands, help us just to see uh, some of the structure in this section, and then two more things just to show some of the structure. So there's this repetition of I know, and I know. Paul is making key statements of things that he is absolutely convinced of, that God has convinced him of, that he wants them to know. And then it's also important or worth looking out for words uh, like a therefore or for which just uh, help us to see how the text flows. For me, as I was preparing to preach this, just seeing this structure, I used uh, these three imperatives to, to help me just break the text down. Um, and the points, I just called this one, the whole truth. This section I just called keep watch. And I broke this down into three Subsection, so keep watch over yourselves, keep watch over those coming in from the outside, savage, wolf, savage wolves, and then keep watch over those who arise from the inside. So the whole truth, keep watch, and then the final one I called stay alert, uh, which is another way to translate this, this verb, be on your guard, could be stay alert or, or stay awake. Now some of the other things we see in this text, uh, Paul is convinced that he will never see them again. Um, so these are his final words to them. Um, he says again, after I leave. So he's convinced that uh, he's on his way to Jerusalem. He's taking a financial gift from the Greek churches to the church in Jerusalem. And as we saw in the previous section, he says that trouble and prison await him. He's been warned and he knows that that's what's coming. And so these are in many ways his final words spoken to these Ephesian elders and final words are important so he's reminding them of key things in this uh, first section we see he reminds them of what he preached um, proclaimed so he says I preach to you the kingdom and I proclaim to you the whole will of God so he's told them um, about the kingdom which is the same way that uh, Jesus preached, said, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Uh, which is also something we saw in the earlier section, verse 31, uh, 21 at least, where we saw that Paul called them to repent and believe, repentance and faith. So Paul is preaching the same uh, gospel, the same good news that Jesus preached. It's all about King Jesus. And he's done that from the whole, he proclaimed to you the whole will of God or the whole counsel of God. So he's saying that he has proclaimed uh, this truth from all of scripture. 
And because he has preached the kingdom, proclaimed the whole will of God, he's able to say, verse 26, Therefore, I declare to you that I'm innocent of the blood of any of you. Uh, this is drawing on imagery from Ezekiel uh, 33, verse, uh, what's it? verse 1 to 6, um, where the watchmen were being spoken to in Ezekiel and they were told that if they didn't warn the people, the blood of the people would be on their hands. So blood means the responsibility for uh, the judgment that they will face will end up on those watchmen. And Paul is saying for himself as a watchman of the truth, their blood won't be on his hands because he's warned them. He's told them everything they need to know. And then he follows on uh, by giving these further commands saying, keep watch. And he starts by saying, keep watch over yourselves and the flock. So he speaks about the church um, in this section as the flock and the elders as the shepherds. So God in his grace and mercy has given his church, the flock, these shepherds who are there to keep watch. But the shepherds need to keep watch over themselves first because they're not going to care very well for the flock if they can't look after themselves. And Jesus used this word, flock, uh, to describe his disciples in Luke 12, verse 32. So Paul again is drawing from Jesus' teaching um, and he's saying, as the flock, they have shepherds over them and those shepherds need to watch themselves so that they can watch the flock well. And this is, this flock is the church of God, which has been brought at the extreme price, which he bought with his own blood. God has paid the ultimate price in the blood of Jesus to purchase this church for himself. And so he says to these shepherds, keep watch. They're very precious to me. Make sure that you look after them well. That is the task I'm giving you. But not only are they to keep watch of themselves, uh, Paul says, I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you. And again, this is drawing on language that Jesus uses. So this language of the flock, uh, you can go and look at Luke. And this idea of savage wolves coming in among them, uh, you can go and have a look at Matthew 7 verse 15 or John 10 verse 12 where Jesus uses the colorful uh, phrase, the sheep, uh, the wolf in sheep's clothing. And so just as Jesus had said wolves will come and you need to be careful for them, here he's saying I know that after I leave wolves, savage wolves will come. They definitely come in, and they won't spare the flock. So they are going to cause trouble. They won't, they will not spare the flock. And Paul wants them to be ready. And he wants them, he wants these elders to prepare the church for the inevitable coming of these wolves. And the way that they prepare the church is by preaching the kingdom from the whole counsel of God. So by proclaiming the whole truth, they will be keeping watch over their church, the church that God has put them as overseers over, this precious church bought with the blood of Christ. He wants them to be prepared for the wolves that are coming by teaching them the whole truth. But not only will savage wolves come in from the outside, he also says, from your own number, men will arise who will distort the truth or twist the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. And the tragic reality is if you go and read um, Paul's letters to Timothy, who was a pastor in Ephesus, uh, just a few years later, if you go and uh, read 1 Timothy 1, verse 19 to 20, or 2 Timothy 2, verse 16 to 18, uh, we are introduced to um, Hymenaeus and Alexander, and then Hymenaeus is mentioned again with uh, Philetus, 
we see that from their own number, men did arrive, uh, arise who distorted, who twisted the truth. And a twisted truth cannot save. And so Paul is saying to these elders, if you want to protect your, your church, this flock, then make sure that you protect the truth. And protect the truth by keeping watch. Watch yourself. Watch out for wolves. Watch out for those who distort the truth. And there is a massive warning in this for all of us. We must never think that we are um, not in danger of being led astray. Because this church in Ephesus, which really was a church that Paul loved, he had spent lots of time, he had taught them well. By the time, another 30 or so years later, that we get to uh, Revelation chapter 2 with the letters to the churches, there is a letter to Ephesus from Jesus that says, I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. So none of us are ever exempt from this danger. We need to stick to the whole truth. We need to keep watching and we need to stay alert, which is the final thing that Paul says in this section. And he says, so be on your guard, stay alert by remembering. Remember what I preached to you. Remember the whole counsel of God that I proclaimed to you. I did this for three years. He says, I never stopped warning. I never stopped warning each of you, day and night, with tears. And just this idea of, of Paul's tears, it was something we saw in last week's passage as well. And these tears just show his great love for these disciples that he is wanting to equip with God's truth. And he's saying, remember what I taught you. I taught you everything you need to know, everything that you need to know about the kingdom from the whole counsel of God, everything that you need to know in order to be saved. And this amazing grace of God that we saw in the previous passage in verse 24, this is what Paul had proclaimed to them. And now Paul is speaking to these Ephesian elders and he's saying, if you want to shepherd God's church well, then protect the truth by keeping watch and staying alert. That is what true shepherds do. And now our world is full of people who, who don't shepherd the church well. Uh, sadly, that many wolves have come in, many who have uh, distorted uh, the truth have come into the church and the results are devastating. So we need to be praying for true shepherds who will stick to the whole truth as we've been given it in God's word. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And as we stick to the whole truth, we need to pray that those shepherds will keep watch over the flock, staying alert, helping their church to stick to the truth and to keep watch and to stay alert as we stick to this glorious truth that we've been given, all about the great shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. The great shepherd is the one who bought us with his own blood. And this truth, this whole counsel of God truth, all focuses on the king of the ki this kingdom, King Jesus, who laid down his life for the sheep. We want to keep leading people to Jesus, pointing people to Jesus, that they might love Jesus more, trust him more fully, and live for him more wholeheartedly. So as you keep digging into this passage, as you teach it to others, I pray that your own heart would be encouraged, reminded of who Jesus is and what he's done, that you will remember the need to keep watch and that you will stay alert. Because twisted interpretations of scripture are not just interesting alternatives. They are savagely destructive of saving faith. And so we need to ensure that as our churches, as individuals, we are protecting the truth. And can I urge all of you to be praying for your church leaders and pray that they will keep watch over themselves and the flock which God has made them overseers. Pray that they really will shepherd the church bought with his blood. And pray that they, as they keep watch, that they'll stay alert, that they'll never become complacent and they will stick to the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Well, God bless as you dig in further.